So I'm working on putting in that X thing that I cut out with the plasma cutter. So I've cut it all up into bits. So that's the rear, that's the front. And what I'm basically doing, so this is the top piece. That I, so I've made a new piece of metal um, and then put in the old part of it. So I'm still reusing the bit I cut out. So. So there's another flat piece here, so I'm not worried, too worried about that hole because that bit's going to get the cut out. Because basically I'm going to put this X, so I'm going to see I've already marked it out. So I'm going to cut that and cut that and then find the centre line of this and then put that, that piece, into here. Uh, just like I do on that one, so I've blended it all in, still see on the other side where the welds are and then we can put the piece in the front the piece in the back and then make up all the bits to fit it so there it is that's that piece at the old pit being put into the new so all welded in there so I haven't dressed it down yet so it's still, still still see it's pretty old it's still smoking yeah so that's all welded in there so now we just got to go on to these bits now. Okay, so I've started to mock up that cross member. Now, so I've put the prop shaft through, the old one. Yeah, it's a good reference. Just drop one bolt in it, look for the clearance on it. And all the clearance is good. I was just about to start making up this piece here and there is a problem. And it's a good problem I found it now because these bolts have to go that way to come out. And if I had to put that piece in, I won't be able to get the bolts out. So the bolts actually got to come around the other way. So I've just got the nut on that side of it. And then the bolt will come this way out. So it's a good job I spotted that now. It's just one thing you've got to be careful when you're making things. It's like you've got to think about how you take stuff out. So it's quite easy to put a bolt in the wrong way around. And then you literally have to just cut it out and start again. And that would have been a quite of a mess to try and chop that bolt out. So I'm glad I caught it now. One more bit to weld on this bottom bit and then we can start putting the ends in. I do like it when you can have the welder turned up. Have a look at them. <laughs> They're lovely welds. When you get them, not when you can put a bit of penetration into it, make it nice and hot. You know it ain't going to distort. It's good to turn the welder right up. <laughs> okay, so we're nearly at the end of getting that cross member back in. Remember the X thing that we chopped out. So we've used a lot of parts of it. So that was the front bit. We've used that. That was the back bit. That was part of the bottom and the other piece, which is underneath, because we actually got the chassis upside down at the moment. Um, yeah, so I've had to extend all the bits, make them a little bit longer. So now we're at the stage where we can actually weld all these pieces back in there to finish boxing this all back off. And then we can remove the cross member. We can remove these, so we can remove that. We can remove these. 
And yeah, and then we can just do a couple of little, little other bits while we've got it upside down. Uh, and then we can start mounting the body again, I think. Okay, it's all back together. So yeah, all complete now, all welded in there. Nice room for the dry shaft to go through. Used a lot, a lot of the original parts to make it look like it was always there. I think it came out really, really nice. Okay, so from the last time we did some filming, we've got the body fitted now. So we've cut it round the chassis. So we've lowered it round at the front. We cleared it round there. Um, we've cut the firewall so the gearbox goes through. So that's all done. Cleared it at the back so it all sits down nice at the back. So we've got just to notch it just round this little piece here just to get it to sit down. So yeah, it's all sat down nice. So I brought a, an aluminium fuel tank that I had at home. It's a little bit too big, so we're gonna cut that down to get that in the back. But it's starting to take shape. So the next thing we got to do is start to make the floor. And But before I do that, I'm gonna redo how the back axle is done. So this is the original axle off the taxi now. The a taxi didn't really have a lot of horsepower and this is quite a small axle to tell the truth. The half shafts in it are absolutely tiny. So what we're gonna replace it with, so we're gonna have to take some measurements off this one and put them onto this one. So this axle is it's just one inch longer. So that's actually gonna help us for the, the when we put some bigger tires on it. Um, but this axle's out of a, a, a Monte Carlo, an American car. So this is a lot stronger, the diff's a lot stronger, the half shafts are a lot stronger, but it didn't have leaf springs on it originally, so that is what we've got to do next. So we've got to cut the mounts off. We don't use it, these ones either, so we're gonna cut all them off. We're gonna convert it to disc brakes anyway, so we don't have to worry about that part. We leave this piece on for the minute. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna to have to take the measurements from the original axle and make up some brackets for this so we can actually bolt the leaf springs on. Okay, so I've got the old axle up on the bench, just checking all the mounts to see what distance I've got between the two. And also I'm just checking what the kingpin angle is. So when I put the engine in, I set it at three degrees leaning backwards. And this is actually set up as three degrees leaning forward. So they actually will be in line. So when I make the new brackets, so I'm gonna weld this together to the bench in a minute. So when I take this off, I know the mounts are gonna be in the right place. So when I can see, I've taken all the brackets off of this one. So when I put the new brackets onto that one, I know that the axle is in the right place. Okay, with a lot of measuring, we're all set up. So everything's all square. So these are square to the brackets and we're, they're 73 millimeters from the ends on both ends. And we've set up the, the, the yoke angle um, so we are up at, there you go. So if it was vertical, it'd be 90, and we, we've got th uh, just over three degrees on it, which is what I set the engine up at. So when the engine prop shaft connects to this, um, they'd be, the, both the flanges would be in the same angle. So yeah, so all I've got to do is put a few tack welds on it, just to hold it where it is because I've still got to put these other plates on it where all the, the U-bolts are going in. I'm not actually going to use U-bolts. I'm going to make another bracket that goes over the top of this and slots inside it. And then there's going to be a bracket that goes on the top. I'm going to probably weld that all in as well to so keep it nice and strong. And then all we've got to do then is we're going to weld on the, the, the lifting system off the taxi from the other axle. There it is, all finished for this part of it. We've still got to put a bump stop on the top. Um, all the bolts go all the way through. I've made the bracket that goes on the other side of the leaf spring. This this piece of metal here is simulating the leaf spring, so I knew it was right, because the leaf springs are two inches wide, so this is two inches wide, so that all fits it nice. I've put on the lifting system off the old axle. Um, yeah, all we've got to do now is find some brake discs and then probably have to take this bracket off but I've left it on at the moment just in case it's in the right way in the right place so we can put some calipers on it but yeah that's basically it set up now so this is the original taxi wheel with the six lug nuts in it or wheel nuts um, so what we're going to do 
This is a part of the old brakes of the axle. So that's part of the drum. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put a new piece in there. This is just for reference. We're not using that piece at all. That's miles too thin for that. Um, yeah, it just that was an idea in my head of how to fix it. So now all we gotta do is make it. been off for off of the beam for a bit. Look at the rust coming off of it. Look. Oh, I've just got to do the other side now. Let's squirt some of this toolbox buddy on it so I can actually show you what it says on it. <laughs> Motorway taxi. <laughs> so they actually made tires specifically for the taxi, but it's a remold. So yeah, but we want to put some white walls on it. So, but it's, it's on your, I didn't realize they actually made tires specifically for this. Is that he's had a puncture and they've done a repair on it <laughs> and the glue was stuck to it <laughs> that's why it was hard to get it out there we go that's the old way of getting it out, not with the machine. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is we want to be able to cut out of this, cut the middle out of this. Now we've got to find where the middle of this hole is. So what I've done is I measured it and I've cut a disc with a pilot hole in the middle so we can actually center it up on that. So the next thing you've got to do is weld that into the middle of the wheel. Okay, so that's that tacked in. So now we can measure from the center of that hole to where we want to cut it.
So there's both discs all drilled out. And now, if you put them on the top, try and do this one handy. There you go. All fits on the end of the axle. So that's the bit that's the really critical bit. That's the bit that centers everything up. And then of course, you just got the, the, the studs that come through. Now what we've got to do is bolt this down. I've got to find some bolts for this because I don't think you've got any wheel nuts or anything. Um, so yeah, so we've got to bolt this down and then we can level this all up. So then we can mount the rim on top of this because this is actually bolted up to the bench. Okay, that is what we've got. So the axle is on its side. What we've done is we've leveled up this in all both axes, so that way and that way. Um, we put the wheel on, bolted the center plate down, and now when you spin the wheel, if you watch this, it just touches that piece of metal. There's a couple of little wobbles in the side of this, but when you actually come around here, That's pretty running true and it's running perfectly. It doesn't go up and down at all. So that one is ready to weld. Okay, so this is the outside of the wheel. This is where the wheel, tr uh, wheel cover will go on it. Uh, and that's the inside. So the inside's got a lot, lot bigger weld on it. Um, but yeah, that's, that's on there nice and hard. This is still really, really hot. But what I am gonna do, because um, this rivet, uh, this wheel is actually riveted on, so it's got a rivets. If you can, if I, if you can see that there, got rivets holding this middle piece in. So I'm actually gonna weld that, clean this up, and I'm gonna weld them on the inside anyway. So, but that's the middle bit sorted. All we gotta do now is make them a bit wider. So there is the wheel all cut off. So we cut it off. Normally, if you was gonna do this, if, if this bit didn't have these pieces in, well, you can see it. See those gaps in the wheel? Normally, when you do it, you do it back here. But because we got them, and you're gonna see them, uh, I'm gonna get them t all this, this inner lip ticked up because it's gonna be really hard to finish it. I can finish the outer lip really, really easy. But yeah, so that's how I cut it off. So I've got my, my daughter on the other end, she's spinning the wheel. Got this bar set up here with the angle grinder against it, so it's always in the same place. And we just basically just part that rim off, and there's the rim there. And then we got to now make a ring that goes on here, and then weld that piece back on. So what I'm doing now, I'm actually putting the, the spacer or the ring onto the rim so i just got to get it absolutely flush so this is the same thickness as the rim and i'm just trying to get it in the perfect place and then just put a, a tag on the back of it and then just work my way around the rim so eventually when we get to the end we're going to overlap and then we have to cut through so that's what i'm doing now so if you look down in there you can see it's absolutely flat all the way around and then basically just put a tack weld on the back of it and then we go back around the other way okay so here is the wheel all tacked up so we've got loads of tack welds all the way around on the uh, on this side of it so yeah now you can see what we was trying to do so we were trying to make it so there is no gap and everything is nice and flat so that is ready to weld. So we put a big weld around this side of the, uh, the rim. 
and then we do a nice little finishing weld there just to smooth all this out. This is the structural weld, the other weld on the other side is just a finishing weld. But that's it, so we're now two inches wider. So on the hot rod, these are the original taxi wheels. And this is what we've transformed them into. So you can see they're all painted now in gray. We've actually put the original tires back on. So if you can compare this tire, what it looks like, into that. So we're actually pulling out the sidewalls. When we get this done for real, when we put when we paint everything um, the right colors and everything it's going to have new tires it's going to have white wall tires and the back tires will be wider but i think they came out really really well so we've started to mock up where the front axle goes now and the back axle is all ready to go in but a lot of people are asking what's happening with the taxi so this is an update on it um don't forget to comment and share like and subscribe on the video like everybody says on YouTube. Um, but until next time, bye bye.